Today I want to combine the capacitive soil moisture sensor readings with another project, learning how to use a 128 by 64 blue OLED display. It just has power pins and then I2C serial clock and data. There's a jumper on here for the I2C address and it appears to default to the 78 hex position and can optionally jumper to the 7A position. That's something to point out later. That gave me a problem. Back when I bought this, I got it from Alice110 1983. So the module shows it's a DIYmore.cc product. And again, those I2C addresses, 78 or 7A, are your choices. And there it is, it's a blue monochrome dot matrix style display, 128 by 64 resolution. 0.96 inch size, and it's an OLED display. It can run from 3 volts to 5 volts. It can operate minus 30 to plus 70 degrees Celsius, and if the full screen is lit, the power consumption is 80 milliwatts. That SSD1306 driver chip is meant for this style display, and it's for OLED or PLED, which is organic or polymer light emitting diodes. And it's got a common cathode LED hookup. We're not going to go through the data sheet and what the chip is capable of. Just wanted to point out lots of technical data is available. I chose the Adafruit SSD 1306 driver so I installed this from the library manager and then they have an example here but this was not exactly totally straightforward for me to get running. Usually all these include header files and such, don't really need any attention, but this one I did need to dig down into the header file over here. There's different things that are commented out that you may need to change. Apparently there's different displays supported by this driver. So I had to make sure I came all the way down to the header file and enabled 128 by 64, that's my screen, and also there's this address define. In this case, they're saying that for a 128 by 64, and of course they're referring to their modules, but still, they're saying it is a 3D address for the 64. It's a 3C address for a 32. At first, I didn't pay attention to any address settings on my module. I just went with, oh, I have a 64, so I'm gonna go with 3D and I got nothing out of it when I uploaded this demo. So that's when I looked on the back and I saw, oh, it looks like mine has a resistor setting an address of 78. So I put 78 over in the program to initialize the display. Nothing happened. Then I, when I came into the header file and I saw, wait a minute, they're actually defining the address again down here. So I came down here and made it 78 as well. Still nothing. So I gave up trying different things and I decided, okay, well, 3C or 3D, let's just try it. It turns out 3C worked. So I put 3C up in the main sketch and I put 3C down here in this define in the header file and suddenly my display was working, even though it looks like it's supposed to be address 78. So I don't know, but I'm just gonna go with that. So this one is not a hands-off kind of sketch demo and driver demo. I think that's all I had to play around with down in the header. So once I made the address correct, I was able to compile the code and get it uploaded. It's hard to pick up the display on the camera even when I change the ISO settings for the brightness. So it may look white, I'm not sure, but it's a blue screen and depending what's happening on the screen you can kind of see scan lines, but when I got the code working, I'm going to press reset now, and it starts with an Adafruit splash screen and then goes through some demo code. So it draws a bunch of lines and boxes and things like that. It does animated text and then it draws some falling stars. I won't pretend to understand everything that's going on in here. It was more about just trying to get the display working and get the address sorted out and figure out how to get simple text on there for now. I don't really need to do graphics and do a fancy display for doing a soil probe. I'm not familiar with all the 
display commands in the functions of this driver, so I basically just looked at this to strip away what's not necessary and learn what I need to do. So obviously you would want to do a begin to initialize with your port, and then if you want to draw a single pixel, you can use coordinates and I'm not sure white, if that just means on, because it is a blue monochrome display. So they call some routines here to draw some test lines, test rectangles, triangles and such, then some character map stuff, and then all these, I guess they are snowflakes. <laughs> so they randomize where to locate them and animate them on the screen. So when I learned a few things from that code, I stripped it down to basically this, whatever the minimum is to get everything initialized. I've got my 64 line display. Address 3C appeared to work, so that's how I initialized the display. And then I just started writing things for soil moisture measurement. When I characterized my specific capacitive soil moisture probe, the min and max voltages were wet is 1.5 volts and dry is 3 volts. So on an analog to digital channel where it goes from 0 to 1023, 1.5 volts is around, give or take, it's around 300 on the reading. 3 volts would be around 620 on the digital scale. I'm using analog 0 for my sensor input from the probe. Then I have a few variables here to store the readings. So whatever I'm considering my valid sensor reading, it's called valid sensor reading, and I initialize it at zero. Sensor reading is whatever reading I'm currently taking, and I may or may not want to discard it or keep it. If I want to keep it, I will update valid sensor reading from sensor reading. These numbers, ranging between 300 and 620, don't really do much for me, so I want to map this range down to a different range from 0 to 3, where I spread out this range of numbers down to just these, and 0 is going to represent wet, and then 1 is damp, 2 is moist, and 3 is completely dry. Then if I later want to change this to, say, 350 and 715, when I use the map command and map it to 0 to 3, it's still going to split it all out and share it appropriately into these ranges. I did want to have some debug messages because if I'm scaling my reading down just from 0 to 3, I might want to know what the raw data reading was, so I made a debug port. Then I initialize the display, come down to the loop, and then I take a sensor reading from the analog input with the capacitive probe, and then I want to do some math on this. This is basically adding hysteresis. I noticed just sitting still, the number might switch back and forth if it's completely dry. It might be reading analog 573, and then the next one's 572, which is different, and then it's 573 again. So it's just going to do that normally when idle. So I just chose a number of 10. The current reading we are taking has to be at least 10 digital steps away from the last stored reading, or else let's just ignore it. So if I got 573, and then it's, it drifts to 574, and I read that, I ignore it, and I keep 573. If it's actually changing, though, it'll eventually go to, say, 583, or 585. Now it's more than 10 away, so I'll actually update this and say, okay, it's 585 or something. Otherwise, let's say it's on the verge between dry and moist, and it keeps flipping back and forth, the display is going to go crazy. It's going to say dry, moist, dry, moist. So it still might do that. Maybe 10 is not the best number, but it was a good start. And here's where I wanted my debug message to show me what is the last valid sensor reading and what is our current reading, regardless if we're going to use it or not. Then I do the mapping. So whatever our valid sensor reading is, it's going to be somewhere between the minimum and maximum wet to dry. So I'm mapping our valid reading instead of between really wet to really dry, I'm mapping it to anywhere from 0 to 4, and it scales it properly. So I drew this out. I don't know if this is exact, but it's just for illustration. Just to show what I was trying to do again, if we have 
a number range from 0 or 1, let's say, from 1 to 100, but we want to scale it, map it over from 0 to 3, I was expecting it would assign it equally 1 to 100 between 0 to 3, like this. So 0 would be mapped over for anything from 1 to 24, and 3 would cover anything from 75 to 100. That's what I thought was going to happen. But what seems to happen is, this maximum in my scenario of 100 just gets assigned to the maximum here. Let's say it was 3 still. So this is what happens. The maximum number of 100 is mapped over to my new maximum of 3, and everything else is split evenly, so it goes in thirds. So what I was actually getting was, anything from 1 to 33 is called 0, 34 to 66 is called 1, 67 to 99 was called 2, and then 100 itself was 3. So that's why I had to do something more like, I had to increase this up to a 4, and then it took the other 0 through 3, the other 4 conditions, and then it split those equally, which is about 25% split. So this is all even, where 75 to 99 is going to be the second highest mapped number, and then there's the final value that I can get in, possibly, is going to be its own mapped value. So down here, 0, 1, 2, and 3, 3 means dry, but 4 also means dry. 4 is the absolute driest number, and 3 is all the rest of the dry numbers, down toward damp. Hopefully something in there made sense. And then all I'm doing is just setting up the display, locating the cursor, and just printing the text, soil, and then whether it's wet, damp, moist, dry. So I'm going to upload the sketch. So, the old sensor reading, for example, to start was 569, and then the next reading was also 569, and that is somewhere toward dry, because it's just out sitting in the air. So on the display, it's showing dry, and it's got a mapped number of 3. So 3 and 4 represent dry, so that looks correct. And then here we can see the next reading shows our original sensor was 569. It currently read a new 570. That's not quite 10 away, so we just keep the 569 and show that we're still dry. We read a 572, so it kind of fluctuates several values like that. It's just sitting on the desk dry. So that's why I added hysteresis. If the difference between 569 and 572 was actually going from dry to damp, the screen would keep changing, dry, damp, dry, damp, but it's really dry. So of course it's showing dry because the probe is just dry. So I can change, of course, the capacitance by impacting it with my hand and get it all the way down to showing wet, damp, moist, dry. And of course if I put it in water it's going to be wet. Take it back out it should go toward dry. So it kind of flipped to damp, and then moist, and now it's dry. So now I've learned how to read the capacitive sensor into an Arduino, not just a voltmeter, how to scale the range so I can do something useful with it, and how to use an OLED display. Maybe I can take this capacitive sensor data and do something useful, like send it wirelessly and use it to turn on an automated sprinkler. More projects coming.